Welcome you all for the afternoon session. Now, I would like to introduce the team of MT case study presenters. The first one is Shri Balachandra T, IFS retired. He is from 2003 IFS batch. He retired as Director of Bandipura Private Reserve. He is working as a project coordinator at MPRI from past two years. And next is Ms. Kumuda. She is a recent associate. She is working in the project Impact Assessment of Downhill Pipe Conveyor on Ambient Environment. She has worked on assessment of successful agroforestry models in Karnataka. The third is Mr. Bhuvan Padraj. He is working as a project associate and he is working in the project Assessment of Grazing as an Ecosystem Services. He has worked on assessment of successful agroforestry models in Karnataka. I invite them to uh, come and present the case study of MPRI. Thank you, Deepoma. Good afternoon. So this is a difficult uh, period. So, check on So, it's great to see that you've got Prior to getting into IFS 2003, I started my career in SFS 86 87 batch for you. Why I am telling this is, I had an interesting professor by name P.K. Srinivasan and he was also bachelor of C. Srinivasan who retired as off and now he is in a, a TCS company. So why I remember, he is no more, unfortunately he is no more. Why I remember is, his classes usually used to be in the afternoon. And first he used to identify person whom he wanted to See that you will have a screen. So, we will start like this. There are three types of people. One, without asking anyone, they will be alert. Second, they will be seeing on both sides. If somebody is sleeping, they will try to sleep. If somebody is awake, they will try to be awake. Third, whatever you do, that person will speak. These three type of people I am finding in class history. Same type of people we find in social forestry or agroforestry farmers. We have very progressive farmers. By just taking care of the situation, they will they will introduce or they will implement anything which is new. As sir was telling in the morning, we went to a farmer's field by name Narayanapa. Narayanapa, Narayan Swami. So, he is a farmer having 30 acres of land. See, he has taken another 80 acres in lease. So, he is totally a large farm. He sells uh, electricity 10 to 12 lakhs per month, solar, to the government. And uh, yes, as a uh, sir also said that all exotic books he has grown, including apple, that did not sell apple. All are putting. And poultry in lakhs, daily he uses it for his canteen uh, laborers. He is having a canteen where he supplies food three times, that is breakfast, two lunch, and also two teas for 30 minutes per day. So I said, I will also come to your canteen. Let me learn first as a laborer, then I will try to adopt your practices. So person who will adopt the practices will see someone else and then adopt the practice. This is the second category. The third category, they don't want to adopt. However, they will always be seeking what is free. Something is given free by the government. Yes, some electricity is given free, then only they will do it, otherwise they will not do it. So such type of people are there. In Indian uh, scenario or in Karnataka scenario, it is not much different. 
in Indian scenario, or I am talking about the fragmentation of this agricultural land holdings. We have very large farms. What I said, the example was first category food simple land. Very large farms. We have medium farms. Let me put it like this. Farmers who have 5 acres and above, we will call them as a medium farm. And less than 5 acres or less than 2 acres, this is the category where we have to, our role is very prominently to be seen in these areas. And the role of, uh, if at all, this role of agroforestry, we are thinking of increasing the tree cover. Sarv has written some, uh, some uh, very, very important uh, things on the board. I think that I tell you, everybody will have to see and enlighten us also because now I am also confused because I have What is TOF, what is RFA, what is F, forest cover, tree cover, everything. So this is another thing where any of you can enlighten us by tomorrow or day after tomorrow, those things. Let us see what is in your perception those means me. So that is all. So, every first, uh, there are many studies. There is a book given to you people, written by a very, uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, hard tasking forest officer, Deepak Sharma sir, he retired as HOFF. He has been writing books. I think this is the tenth book he has written, if I am not wrong. That tells about agroforestry in Karnataka. Every wanted to, rather not every, the Karnataka Forest Department wanted to document those case studies wherein we can implement or can be implemented for cutting across the different sections of farms. So they gave the study to MP. Next. They gave the study to MP. Then our uh, DG sir, he designed a model and we, there was a lot of discussion how we have to go about this and what should be our modus operandi to collect data and also the modus operandi to see that how this collected data would be useful for the largest section of the society. After all we are here not to see that uh, how forest officer can change the scenario of agroforest. We, unless farmer is doing, if I am a farmer holding two acres of land, if you tell that uh, see 20 percent you have to do this, 20 percent sand, 20 percent horticulture, 20 percent, it is very nice to listen. But what about my subsistence? What should I do for uh, day to day living? How should I go about? So these were all the questions which we had in the mind at the time of taking up this study. So design. So this is, I will not go in detail. Agro, you have already, every state has an agroclimatic zone. Here we have 10 agroclimatic zones. What are the districts? What are the talukas? What are the places? Which come in those type of zones is very well known to you people. You can just imagine your state wherever you come from. So then models and the systems, this is very nice to speak in a class. We have models written by very well read people, well researched people. We have systems. But how far they are effective? Effective in what terms? Not only in terms of economic benefits, in terms of the society, producing your carbon sequestration, so many other things came into picture. I'll tell one by one. So, random select, now farmers have to be selected randomly and opportunistically. This is the word coined by our PG, sir. It is widely used. How to select? First, we went next. What are all the things we did? The team did. So the team comprised about more than 10 people. They have worked for more than a year. And still we are in a stage of conclusion. 
We have not finalized the report. The lead author uh, was uh, Mr. Vengay Goda. He was additional principal chief conservator of forests. He has also put in nearly 33 years of service. Apart from that, we had our scientists, MP Young Minds were there. Uh, they have devoted their very, very valuable time in going to field under the guidance of our director general. So this, these are the things which we don't bother about KPY, MGNR, EGA, these are all the programs. Then documented tree species richness. Our people, when they come to their case studies, they will be talking about biodiversity index, they will, talk, they will be talking about carbon sequestration, they will be talking about soil organic carbon. So all these things matter. But farmer is not bothered about it. How we can say that? Only all the while we have been telling teak is good, silver oak is good, sandal is good, and sandal with uh, this crop is good, this is very economical, all these things we have telling. But the scientific aspect of this has not been unraveled much. And made known to the farmer that he is contributing to the betterment of society. So this is the study area in general. So those are the, that is Karnataka map, uh, 10 agroclimatic zone based on rainfall temperatures or conditions, etc. etc. They, they have been divided into uh, this thing. next slide. No? Yes, this is the, I think all of you must have in your state, must have conducted some research like this. Can I have an answer from anybody? A research like this has been conducted and you have some documentation, some data collected which will definitely be useful for us also. So what, what are your findings in that? So this is the way uh, our DG and other very important uh, there that is we discussed and we have arrived at this. This is the matter, manner in which we have to go about this further. So there are ten, uh, two, two talos from each agroclimatic zone. Then, list of successful farmers obtained from KFT and other sources of each farm. Here there is a catch. Whenever we ask who are the successful farmers, each person has his own way of expressing the successfulness of the farm. Sir, he is a very big farmer. I am talking about KFT. He is a very big farmer. We have provided him thousands of seedlings. He has raised them. He is maintaining it, that is one answer. Second, sir, he is a big farmer but good for nothing. He is not maintaining, he took thousand seedlings but he did not nourish them properly. They are made, the survival rate is less than 20%. Another farmer who takes seedlings, nourishes, without the much help from Karnataka Forest Department or other departments, he goes on his own means, purchases commercially also, then he does it. So all these things were there. The committee, I mean the team decided that this is not the way. We, if we want to represent the state, then we should have a mix of all type of farms. He's a small holding, uh, small land holder, but doing very well within his means of uh, economics. Another person is there who goes into different sectors of agriculture, animal husbandry, horticulture, silviculture, even pisciculture sometimes, and also going into different arena of producing his own uh, milk, having dairy, and where we compost, so many things. This is a diversified farming, what we call it. So, back. So, see, this list, we, our team went to the Taloka, subsequently, we had already the list, secondary, I mean, secondary data we had, because the department has been distributing seedlings in various things, both agriculture, horticulture, silviculture, we have all the departments are distributing. We went to the forest department, forest department was uh, giving uh, seedlings, in, as uh, raising seedlings for public distribution. This, is, this was one of the major area where the seedlings are distributed to the farmers and subsidized it. Say 1 rupee for 5 or 6 seedlings, 8 
3 rupees for 8.1 seedling just to encourage the farmer and the uh, Ajay Mishra sir was speaking about KAP see KAP is Krishi Aranya process just to encourage the farmer per seedling the farmer was given 135 rupees per seedling in a span of 3 years so this is another scheme that does not bother MGNRIG if I, I was a social forestry DFO in the year 2007 and 2010 in Hassan district, I think you know, some of you must be aware of Basuraj knows about Hassan district. It is a, a district covering all types of agroclimatic area. If you go to a area, it is very dry. If you go to Hassan, it is called as Uti of Karnataka. If you go to Satleshpura, it is a Malnad region. Well, partially Malnad, partially. So, we have all sorts of representations of climatic zones in Asa. So, this is MGNR Asia when it came to picture in 2007. Most of us, our senior officers are there. Narayan um, sir and uh, Narayan sir. And also, sir, uh, what? Sir. You, you have worked in IWST also. Yes, sir. Uh, so, they are aware of the MGNR Asia situation and also our Kerala brothers are here, they also know that. What, what was the, how it came into picture, though the act came in 2005, 2007 it took some shape and uh, there was a, there were always a reluctance in implementing such schemes because nobody wanted to take risk, that imprisonment bar was there and all these things and then we started in Hassan. So in the Karnataka state, 57 lakh savings were distributed in Hassan district alone and those savings were raised by 90% of women in a nursery of, we had 17 nurseries. All the women were paid wages to MGNREGA only. So that was taken up as a very, very successful model then. Apart from that, though so the survival percentage, there also it was there. The farmer will be given fertilizer money farmer will be given anything, so into cultivation work, what he is doing, soil working, etc. He will be paid that money. All these things were done. Why this is being done? This is to encourage the farmers, one way. Second is to see that economically is uplifted. Third is, he, we want to see that the maximum. Sir, that's very, 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 you know, I can say that anybody could understand what is the role of tree cover in getting the rates. So that he has explained it. So our point is, now forest boundary, as he has already put it, we have that legally defined boundary is there. And if at all we want to increase, we cannot increase the boundary as such. We can increase the intensity of tree cover there inside the forest. And we can see that more and more farmers, I was talking now, that two acres, the two to five acres, these farmers, go into this tree cultivation without sacrificing the agricultural produce because they need that. We cannot ask them to know you stop growing rice, now you start growing trees. If, if you say any farmer will listen, yeah, they will listen. Any farmer will listen just like that you start growing rice in Kerala, you go tea, you grow tea, means will he listen? Oh, he will not listen. For my purpose, I will definitely take uh, rice. I can reduce cultivation of rice or I can go in for a different variety of rice where the production is more in a per unit area. Then I will take up this also because it is more remunerative for me in the longer run. Convincing farmer and telling him that you have to go in for forestry, we should have an alternative. It is not only the role of forest officer, it is role of any common citizen who would like to see that tree cover is increased. So this we had this we had very difficult task and we identify somehow 8 to 10 people. Identification, 8 to 10 people, amongst 8 to 10 people, contacting all 8 to 10 people and some are not ready to tell. Some are ready to tell but they don't have much of information. All this was an issue and the, Somehow we could find out some people were reciprocating and they were responsive enough and we could collect some of the data. One successful agroforestry farmer amongst 8 to 10, one was selected randomly. So, 
totally 40 successful agro farmers data collection we are having. Next. Data collection, okay. Questionnaire, I don't think you people will be much interested in what type of questionnaire we have drawn. If at all you are interested, we can give you that questionnaire copy also. So it only uh, to take that information which is more uh, prominent for us to see that what is going, what were its uh, constraints, what were its uh, crop, different species of crops grown. And to see that our main, our main concern here was not only to ask him where he got these uh, seedlings at the age of the trees and age of all these things. We wanted to scientifically collect that also. So one is carbon estimation. Estimation of above ground mass. Estimation of below ground mass. Below ground. And uh, estimation of soil organic comfort. Alama? Biodiversity index was also calculated by observations recorded from the farmland. Everything is there. Sumi Azara, everything is there. MP are there, MP to go there, you can take it. Next. Oh, then in the corner. Okay. So this is all I wanted to tell you people and say that what each of the case study my people will be explaining to you. So anything sir, anything which I can get from you or anything you would like to ask me how we went ahead with this study, that I will be able to answer. The statistics of procedure you follow. Yes, yes. You follow the standard. Yes, yes. And how this, I think they will get, also give a, how these calculations are being done. What did you Calculations part, you can give the, the soft copy name of how we have done and what is the ultimate uh, each of the climatic zones we are drawing into inference that these are these, these are some of the let me call it models or systems. See most of the times what we see in the farmer, well you get some seedling, you bring those seedlings. Somebody else like our uh, you know G and uh, Vijay or Amit G will tell. So you know no, you there is one uh, scheme in government, you go and get this good horticulture plants are being given bring those. So such models are very common now. Such models are there. He wherever whatever the space he has, he tries to squeeze in those space. System systematically organizing, systematically making a plan, what he should raise in each of the farms, we have hardly 10% of the farmers there. There our efforts are not much required. Rather than to tell him that he can go in for a different variety of crop or different species. We have an agriculture, the sir was asking in the morning, one, two questions were there. One was, uh, uh, which is the nodal department? So actually social forestry department is the nodal department of forestry activity in Karnataka. The DC of social forestry, I was the nodal officer for implementing all the schemes related to forestry. 20% so of the money was set aside. And we also earlier have had this watershed department where forestry component is there and there also compulsorily 20% of the uh, funding was to be kept aside for tree cover in a watershed basis. So uh, our uh, Naran sir was also asking one question, fund flow somebody asked. You are asking, asking what exactly is the fund allocation? 20%. So whatever the fund is there. Suppose MGNR is here, some work has to be taken on a panchayat basis. 20% of the fund is compulsorily kept there. That, uh, that is the norm. Suppose if I am a wage forest officer, I will say that my, I don't have space, that money can be utilized, I have to give it in writing, that money will be utilized. If I am very weak, then somebody else will try to overpower this and they will just to sideline me and take it. So all these things are there, it's in general norm. Everywhere it is there. So funding there is no problem as far as I am concerned. If we have funding, the only thing is we, we should see that we implement it in a proper way, then definitely people will be ready to fund. The sourcing past will be still there in Canada. Yes, sir. It was two years back. No, now also, sir, in Panchayat level, uh, that, that's what I am telling you. If at all that particular officer is very weak, weak in the sense, he doesn't talk, he is not interested, 
already such type of this thing in any every department people try to take. So if you are very certain that you are going to implement and you are uh, relationship with CEO or uh, the de development uh, person is there in Jilla Panchayat, development secretary will be there. So if you are anyone or deputy commissioner, as far as this flood relief or drought prone, all these meetings they give prominence for uh, this tree cover. But if you say, if you say that I don't want sir, there is no space, I will not implement, then they keep cut. That is also any contribution, sir. At, at this stage, how people will be presenting each case. Okay. Okay. Kumuda. So she is Kumuda, the research associate. She had she is working in. Uh, other project, but she was in uh, this agroforestry project. Apart from after that, I think I request Bhuvan also. He is also a research associate now. Research associate. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Bhuvuda KV, uh, working as a research associate at NP. Uh, today we all are gathered here uh, to discuss the role of agroforestry in increasing the tree cover. As sir explained, uh, um, we have conducted a study uh, to assess the successful ag agroforestry model in all the agroclimatic zones of Karnataka. So I was also a part of that study and I visited around 9 uh, farmers from different ag agroclimatic zones of Karnataka. So here I will uh, be presenting a case study, uh, like a success story of a farmer who is practicing agroforestry from dry region of Karnataka, that is central dry zone. Uh, as we all know and uh, it is evident that uh, uh, a primary goal of an agroforestry is to increase the tree cover in the farmland, agricultural land. So uh, before getting into the uh, story of our farmer, we will discuss about the uh, agroclimatic zone that is central dry zone. Central dry zone consists of uh, five districts, uh, six taluks of Chitradurga, three taluks from Davangere, one from Chikmagalu, three taluks from Tumkur, and one from Hassan district. This zone covers an area of 1.943 million hectares. The annual rainfall ranges from 453 to 717 mm. The elevation ranges between 450 to 900 mm, shallow to deep red clays and grey yes, yeah. uh, and also the uh, brown clay uh, loams are the major soil types here. Mean maximum temperature recorded here is around 36 degrees Celsius. Ragi, Jowar, Pulses and oil seeds are the major agricultural crops and uh, forestry trees we can see Peak, Hebbeu and Silver Oak. And the village we have selected is uh, Madure, which is in Kasaba Ubriya Hosturga Dalu from Chitrudurga district. The population is around 1800 with 423 households. Major occupation of the villages uh, is agriculture. And ragi, maize, jowar, and vegetables are the karif uh, crops grown. And in rabi season, uh, uh, farmers used to grow ragi, maize, horse ground, and brown nut. Coconut, areca nut are the major horticultural species. Uh, during recent years, pomegranate production is drastically increased uh, in this region, even though it is rain fed. Most of the area is rain fed here. When it comes to agroforestry, uh, the farmers are adopting the agroforestry or tree culture in the recent days uh, by adopting bund plant plantation and boundary plantation with the species like tea, hebevo and silver oak. Majority is uh, tea and hebevo. And uh, he is our uh, progressive farmer, Mr. Uh, sorry, doctor. He is a doctor, Dr. Murgesh MS. He is from Madure uh, village. Um, he is a, is a renowned gynecologist in Hosdurga Taluk and he is very much passionate about the agriculture the, with his profession. Uh, as, 
as we discussed with our interaction, I came to know that he had been fascinated by the beauty and serenity of the farmlands from the Malnad region of Karnataka. So he decided to work with the mother nature, uh, mother nature. and he started the uh, uh, farming in his uh, 17 acres of irrigated land. Uh, that is irrigated land um, to bore wells uh, with a good water drilling capacity are uh, the major source of irrigation for his farm. And he spent many days researching and cons consulting the expert uh, with the allied departments to know the uh, difficulties in establishing the agroforestry system uh, and to know the species.